welcome back or if you're new here welcome to my channel uh, new video today obviously um, I really love superheroes so I'm going to be doing like a superhero overview uh, history origins kind of thing for my favorite superheroes DC and Marvel um, if there's anyone you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Uh, well, today's video is on Cyborg. Cyborg is a DC character created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. His first appearance was in a special insert in DC Comics Presents issue 26 in October of 1980. He was originally known as a member of the Teen Titans, but in DC's 2011 reboot, he became a founding member of the Justice League. But in the more recent reboot, Cyborg has been re-established as past member of the Teen Titans. Victor Stone is a name that was given to him at birth by his parents, his mother and his father, Silas Stone. His parents are both scientists, who, in Cyborg's original origins, used him as a test subject. Victor, as he grew older, became a very rebellious teen and stopped responding to his parents' incredibly controlling ways. During his rebellious stage, Victor did get a little caught up with some petty criminals, though he did manage to keep enough of a distance not to get involved in very serious situations. Victor did manage to find a passion for sport, which his father especially did not condone and did kind of abandon his studies for sports. This is the situation that Victor was in, a kind of, you know, tense situation with his parents when his life changed forever. In his original origins, this is when Victor enters uh, his parents' lab where they are experimenting with different dimensions. Uh, you know, dimensional travel, uh, dimensional portals, that kind of stuff. At Victor's entry, a giant creature is pulled through one of the portals that Silas and his wife are experimenting with, and it manages to kill everyone in the facility except Silas himself and Victor, though it does maul Victor very seriously. Fortunately, his mother did not survive. The monster was eventually sent back to where it came from. Silas Stone, in an attempt to save his son's life, decides to fuse some medical prosthetics that his lab was working on with Victor. The process does save Victor's life, though from then on he is always half robot, so a cyborg. During this whole process Victor was unconscious, so it was done without his consent. And when he woke up, he was horrified at what his father had done to him, stating that he would have rather died than live the way his father has made him. Over time, Victor eventually got used to his new limbs and cybernetics, though the public didn't. Even his girlfriend at the time said that she would have preferred him dead. Victor's will remained strong though through all this. So when his past criminal friends decided to commit a terrorist attack, he decided to use his new body and powers to stop them, thus becoming a superhero. And at that point, he takes the superhero name, Cyborg. When the Teen Titans were formed by Raven, Cyborg decided to join for the support system that the team would offer him. He decided to join so he could be with people his age who are in similar situations to him, who have had accidents happen to them, who are just different. Cyborg made many friends within the team, but through the team he also made civilian friends. Most notable was a group of teenagers and children who uh, had lost their own limbs and were getting used to their own prosthetics and who looked up to Victor as a role model. Their supervisor, Sarah Sims, was also a pretty big fan of Cyborg and those two eventually had a relationship. Though at some point in the comics, before and after, through different stories, he had a relationship 
with a Star Lab scientist known as Dr. Sarah Charles, who in the beginning, in the origin story, helped him recuperate from his injuries and get used to his new prosthetics. Cyborg, while with the Teen Titans, went on lots of adventures. Some of these adventures ending up with him having different body parts or completely different bodies. A main storyline where this happens to Victor is when he ends up on a different planet made up of cybernetic aliens. While he was on their planet, he was teaching them about humanity, but the longer he spent on the planet, the more he lost his own. He eventually came back to Earth having forgotten everything about his past life before the robotic aliens, and he started unconsciously searching out for the Titans ones that were alive and ones that had died in his absence. He even unconsciously started looking for himself because he, like, himself as Cyborg because he didn't recognise that he was Cyborg. He then created perfect realities, or what he thought were perfect realities, for the Titans that he kidnapped. The Titans that were kidnapped do escape and with the help of other Teen Titans try to save Cyborg. But this is when the Justice League intervene, not thinking that Cyborg can be saved. A fight ensues between the Teen Titans and the Justice League. And while this is happening, the original Titans, including Changeling, Nightwing and Raven, manage to restore Cyborg's memories and humanity and download them into a suit that used to belong to a former Teen Titan known as the Omega Drone. Though he was saved, Cyborg didn't feel as human as he previously had in this suit. That was when Nightwing revealed, miraculously, that he had actually cloned Cyborg's previous body. So he was downloaded into this new body, which was more human than anything he'd had before, and he went about living a normal life. Though, when he decided he wanted to be a superhero again, he used part of the Omega Drone suit to replicate his original form and powers. After the original Teen Titans team had disbanded, Cyborg became a mentor for the new Teen Titans, along with Changeling, Raven and Starfire. He participates in the Infinite Crisis storyline, where he is nearly destroyed by Alexander Luther Jr. He was rebuilt slowly over the next year, and when he awoke, he found a completely new Titans team, with the only member that he recognised being the new Robin, Tim Drake, as the leader of the team. He was reasonably upset by this occurrence and tried to reform the original Titans team, though many refused the offer. Cyborg eventually comes around to the new team. Though he isn't the leader, he is the main role model that all the members do look up to. Cyborg then has a major plot point after his being rebuilt, um, where his ex-girlfriend is getting married, but her fiancé has sold Cyborg's technology to the military. And this is where the military are forcefully equipping ex-criminals or current petty criminals with the cyborg tech. One of these petty criminals, or petty criminals, being one of cyborg's former friends that was a part of the terrorist plot that I mentioned earlier. He has the technology forced on him and as an act of revenge decides to attack Dr. Sarah Charles and her fiance. Cyborg does save Sarah and her fiancé, though becomes infuriated when he finds out that they have sold his technology to the military. In this storyline, he finds out about a project called Project M and creator behind Project M, Mr. Orr. Mr. Orr had been trying to create an army of cyborgs and he had even created a Cyborg 2.0. Cyborg 2.0 actually turned out to be a cyborg from a different dimension, a different future dimension. So Cyborg then had to fight Mr. Orr's mini cyborg army. This included Cyborg 2.0, the Phantom Limbs, an elite soldier group from the Middle East who use cyborg tech. 
and the Cyborg Revenge Squad made up of the Fearsome Five and other supervillains that had been integrated with his tech. Cyborg, with the help of the Teen Titans, managed to defeat the enemies and remove all his tech from weaponized projects. Sometime after this, uh, the story arc Blackest Night occurs, which was one of the biggest arcs in the whole DC universe, where dead superheroes were brought back to life through black power rings. Cyborg participates with the other Teen Titans in defeating the dead Teen Titans. Following this story arc, Cyborg is then asked to join the new Justice League of America after the disbanding of the original League. Cyborg was then written out of the JLA comics as a main character, though writers did say he'd have a continuous presence, though not as much as before. Cyborg has a few more adventures with the Justice League of America before DC introduced their new 52 reboot. As of, as of 2011, Cyborg became a founding member of the Justice League. His origin story was revisited and his accident was tied in with the Dark Side story plot. Instead of Silas Stone working on interdimensional portals and travel, uh, the writer Jeff Johns had Silas working on alien technology that had been introduced earlier in the Dark Side plot, known as a mother box. The mother box explodes, killing a lot of the staff, sparing Silas and a few other scientists, but again, fatally injuring Victor himself. Silas then proceeds to do the same thing as the original storyline, incorporating new prosthetics and technology to save Victor's life, though the mother box itself is incorporated into Cyborg's new prosthetics and technology. He then becomes Cyborg and helps to defeat Darkseid with the other founding members of the Justice League. This event is also depicted in the animated movie Justice League War and what the new cinematic Justice League movies are based off of. Cyborg from then on is a major character in... Cyborg from then on is a major character in the Justice League comics, going on many adventures, including Cyborg joining the Trinity War storyline where he battles his own prosthetics and gets his own new body, battling Glorious Godfrey and some of Darkseid's power demons and stopping their attempt at world domination, this event kind of being caused by Damian Wayne, and a trip to Apocalypse, home of Darkseid himself. After some of these adventures, DC Rebirth happened. Another reboot. In this reboot, Cyborg is still a founding member of the Justice League. He has a major role in the story plot Dark Knight's Metal, where he is kidnapped by an evil Batman from another dimension who wants to hack him and get the information on the current world's Justice League so he can defeat them. So he does manage to hack Cyborg. This isn't a rare occurrence. Cyborg does get hacked every now and again and it's not a surprise. Cyborg almost gives in to the mother box that is inside his technology that wants to prevent the hacking from happening but in the process erase Cyborg's personality and take over his body. That is until Raven shows up in her soul self form and manages to help Victor overcome the hacking and save his team. Those are just some of Cyborg's major story arcs and his different origins that have been happening over the past couple decades. So Cyborg has quite a long list of abilities. These have changed and fluctuated over the years. Um, flight being a major one, he wasn't able to fly in original comics, then he was, and now we're not sure if he's able to fly. It's here and there. It comes in and comes out. He also has super strength, speed, stamina. He's more durable due to his electronic body parts. 
He has a metal eye and an internal computer system. His metal parts include a laser pointer, a grappling hook and a sonic cannon. He's highly intelligent with an IQ of 170. He can interface with computers. He also has a bionic ear. Finally, he can absorb and adapt other and new technologies. Cyborg has appeared in many different forms of media. Some of these including animated TV series such as The Superpowers Team, Galactic Guardians, Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go! Cyborg appears in the TV show Smallville in the fifth season in a self-titled episode. He also has a set appearance in the upcoming Doom Patrol TV series that doesn't have a set date yet. He's also a main character in the new Justice League live action movies. Cyborg has appeared in quite a few animated movies including Justice League War as I mentioned earlier, um, Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo, <laughs> he's appeared in a few Lego movies, uh, he's also had an appearance in Justice League Dark and he had a main role in Justice League vs Teen Titans. And for you gamers out there, Cyborg is a playable character in quite a few video games. This includes the Game Boy Advance game centered on the Teen Titans. He's also a cinematic character in the DC Online game. And he is a playable character in the Injustice Gods Among Us video game and phone app. He has many more playable uh, appearances in other video games. Cyborg is a major character in the DC Universe. He represents our society at the moment. We never go anywhere without our phones, laptops, any type of connection as some of the writers have stated previously. I hope I've covered everything. I hope I've covered everything you want and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did I wouldn't mind you liking and subscribing and you know ringing that little bell. I'd love to hear your suggestions for any future videos. I do have a plan for my next superhero video being Charles Xavier, Professor X of the X-Men. Um, if you'd like a different hero or character let me know. I am open to any and all superheroes. If there's a superhero I haven't heard of before let me know. I'd love to learn about it. I love DC and Marvel, let me know. Um, yeah, I have a new Game of Thrones video coming out soon as well, so stay tuned. <laughs>